And it'd be fair to say that um, CPRE has got a sort of long-standing interest in um, community energy issues. Um, we have been for quite a long time a member of this thing called the Community Energy Coalition. So a, a diverse uh, collection of organisations, um, including some of the speakers, um, some of the organisations that are speaking today, Community Energy England, um, 1010 uh, and Pure Leapfrog as well as uh, some other organisations that you uh, may be more surprised to learn are part of that collective, um, the Church of England, uh, the Women's Institute um, and people like Friends of the Earth as well. And the aim of the coalition is really to um, promote a community energy revolution, so really get um, a lot more um, projects going and get, getting those off the ground. And I think um, there's been some success um, in terms of particularly the coalition playing a key role um, in persuading the government to produce its first ever uh, community energy strategy, which it published um, in January last year. Mm. So certainly CPRE sees community energy as a, as a really positive um, way forward. Um, we, we think there are particular um, principles, if you like, that um, community energy projects should build into their approaches. And I just wanted to touch on um, a few of those now. Um, I've, I've sort of listed, listed four here. Um, the first two um, being led by the local community itself um, with, with broad buy-in from that community. I think that's, that's a really important um, issue that's fundamental to community energy projects. And we also see it as vital that the communities get the direct benefits from, from the projects that they lead. I think they'd be a sort of part of the common understanding of community energy. Maybe the, the second two are perhaps a little bit more unique to CPRE's perspective. I just wanted to say something on those. So the third one that you know, we, we think it's important that projects should focus on reducing energy as well as supplying um, low carbon energy. So, so doing the, the sort of supply side and the demand side. And we think that by um, also sort of linking through into um, energy efficiency and other um, demand reduction approaches that that can really increase the benefits to the community um, of, of these projects. And then something that Neil's touch on, touched on um, in his introduction, we think it's, um, you know, it's important that um, as, as part of projects that um, uh, the, the principle of being sensitive to the area where the project is in terms of design um, and siting, um, particularly of obviously the generation infrastructure, um, really to try and minimise the kind of local environmental impacts on landscape, wildlife and, and other issues as well. So that's sort of, you know, things that we think are important for community energy projects. Um, I think there's, there's been a, f a fair amount of progress made on community energy. I think, um, as has been alluded to by a few of you, perhaps, you know, there's more that we can, we can do. Um, and... Uh, you know, it's, it's been clear to me um, over the last few years um, that um, having political leadership at the highest level can make an important difference in um, making sure that more community energy projects actually happen. So um, in national government, I think the role of um, Lib Dem ministers in the coalition government, and particularly Ed Davey, was, was crucial in getting the community energy strategy produced. Um, and certainly we're seeing um, a growing number of community energy projects. I think Afshin is going to talk a bit more about how it's looking at the moment. Um, so, yeah, um, certainly we believe um, in community energy is, a, is an important way forward. Um, needs more communities to get involved. And, and for sure, um, there needs to be more support from, from the government and others. And there are, there are some barriers, I think, there um, which, which need to be reduced. Um, and again, other speakers will, will talk a bit more about those, those barriers. Um, I've put there, they may be linked to those two things. So I think actually, if more communities get involved, it may actually persuade the government that they need to work a bit harder to um, address some of the barriers that still exist. Just, just briefly, um, the work that CPRE has, has, has done to support community energy. So um, in terms of our overarching campaigning work on, on energy, um, some of that definitely supports um, community energy approaches. And we produced, for example, 
um, a report called Warm and Green um, in April this year, which really makes the case for uh, a much greater focus on energy demand reduction, energy efficiency, particularly in homes, but also community buildings as well. Um, we're we're uh, yet to see whether that has uh, persuaded the government to, to do anything differently. Um, and then sort of more specifically on community energy, um, particular sort of lobbying, influencing, um, we've been pushing for um, a more fair kind of tax relief um, package for community energy projects um, with, with a number of others as well. Um, and um, also recently wrote to the new Secretary of State, um, Amber Rudd, um, in advance of the review of the feed-in tariffs that's coming through, sort of saying that we need, you know, um, uh, sensible um, and um, clear sort of ongoing support um, through the FITs for um, renewable energy technologies to support community energy projects. So that's something that we've thought is really important for the new government. And then support directly to communities today is an example of that. So obviously putting on this workshop um, and we're also you know, thinking about what else we can do to provide information directly to communities. Uh, and I'll say a bit more about that in the wrap up at the end. I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank you.